Hello, this is Pat Truman, founder of PornHarms.com and director of the War on Illegal Pornography. And on our program today, we have back with us Dr. Jill Manning. Dr. Manning is a licensed marriage and family therapist in Colorado. She's an author and the former social science fellow at the Heritage Foundation. Dr. Jill Manning, welcome back. Thank you. My pleasure to be with you. Well, good to have you back. Uh, we talked a bit in our previous segment about the impact of pornography on girls and women. But I want to talk about your other paper, the impact of pornography on marriage and family. What is that impact? Well, the impact is diverse. And, uh, but we do know from the social science research that is available thus far that pornography, generally speaking, has a negative and distressing effect on marriages, that it increases the risk of separation, marital strain, and ultimately divorce. Pornography right now in this country is one of the leading causes of divorce, whether that is cyber sex or um, inappropriate uh, relationships through social media networks and, and whatnot. Um, we also know that it, it can be a very devastating betrayal. Uh, many of the women that I've worked with and researched um, will describe this as more painful or as painful as what we describe as a traditional affair, infidelity. And so it, especially married women, more so than dating or cohabitating women, will describe pornography use of a partners um, to be uh, a real injury to that attachment and marital bond. And so it, it's contrary to what the industry would have people think, that this is hardly a marital aid. Um, it does spice things up, but it's not the spice that uh, most people are looking for or wanting. It, it really has a negative effect on trust, intimacy. We know that pornography users tend to have more difficulty with intimate relationships and a higher risk of sexual dysfunctions and problems. Well, that's a very interesting point that you mentioned because some of these uh, advice columnists in the newspapers and on uh, radio and uh, et cetera, I have heard and people have complained to me about them saying, if you've got a problem in your marriage, spice it up a little bit, try pornography. There's nothing wrong with it, but you're saying there is. Well, Patrick, what's so interesting to me is that there is not one piece of really solid, credible social science literature that shows that pornography has benefit in marriage or has long-term positive outcomes. And so I, I really find it irresponsible and even unethical, depending on who's voicing the opinion, to be recommending or prescribing pornography when there is no good data backing that up. It is solely based on subjective opinion. Whereas on the other, on the flip side, there is good social science data showing that this causes harm and is a detriment to the, the intimate bond between a husband and a wife. The uh, man who decides on his own to get involved in pornography, whether he thinks he's got a problem in his marriage and this will help him, or if he's just curious, the scenarios that I hear most typically, and I was just at an event last night where a uh, woman told me about her uh, sister who had a wonderful marriage but over the last year, it's gone south, and it's because of pornography. She said she doesn't recognize her brother-in-law anymore. No affection, doesn't pay attention to the children, spends a wild amount of money on this uh, addiction, it seems to be. Uh, so men, uh, they're built differently. They look at these pictures, and uh, it's almost as though they uh, they stop. Women have a different reaction, and it's once the woman discovers that the male, that the husband rather, is involved with pornography, uh, it, sometimes it's too late, and she doesn't know how to deal with it, does she? Well, I, I think the response, just like with anything else, really varies depending on the woman, depending on the, 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 his use and, and how all of that came about. I know in my own research with wives, I learned that women who discovered the problem on their own um, had a more intense negative response and even traumatic response, and it posed a greater threat to the marriage than did a woman who had a spouse that 
humbly admitted this problem and brought it to her attention, disclosed it to her. And that sadly, the majority of cases, it's discovered, it's not disclosed. So I, I hold more hope for marriages where it is disclosed, but that doesn't mean there's no hope for those where she discovers it. There, there is always ways to help and, and heal from this if the couple's committed to change and willing to work on this and, and want to remain in the marriage. Um, I'm curious how uh, you, uh, as a therapist, when you bring couples together and they have this problem, uh, the natural reaction of the man is that they, they want to say it's not harming. It's not harmful. I still love my wife. Right. Well, they, they work very hard, from my experience, um, to compartmentalize it, that this is not, this is totally separate from her. This is not harming her. This just is a bad habit on the side that he wants to continue. And life just doesn't work that way. We're more integrated and things spill over and affect other areas of our life. That, that's just how it works. Things are systemic. It's interrelated. And um, when we work with men, we really try to help them understand what the impact is and to step out of that very self-centered, selfish uh, view of it and really accept and understand how this does have impacts, not just on her, but on him, on children, and society at large, that it's negatively impacting the people in the industry as well, that he's, he's helping support a supply and demand chain that really is linked to so many ills in our world, so sex trafficking, prostitution, drug cartels, organized crime, etc. Those links have been shown through various courses of research and, and commission reports. Is there any research on the effect on children of a couple that's having trouble, one spouse is involved with pornography and harming the marriage? Uh, it's it's limited. We need more research in that area, but there have been some studies that have shown that when um, children are in a family where one or both parents are using pornography, that the child is understandably at higher risk for being exposed themselves, that um, they're also at greater risk for witnessing and being um, part of more family conflict. Um, they are at higher risk for having parents separate and divorce, which we know there's a whole other host of effects and, and uh, things that impact children with that. I saw one study where, uh, I don't know if it was a study or maybe just anecdotal uh, evidence of uh, harm from pornography. It was a uh, statement by uh, uh, divorce lawyers at a convention that some significant percent said that Pornography used by one spouse is now a significant issue in divorces, causing divorces. Is that right? Yes, I, I'm not aware of the particular study you're referencing or comment, but I, I would agree with that statement. Um, I'm being called upon more and more to, to testify or to consult in cases, and I'm seeing more and more child custody cases where pornography is an issue that's being raised. And I don't think it's just a dirty tactic in... in courtrooms. I, I think it's a reflection and a symptom of what's happening in society that more and more parents have have concerns about not just the emotional well-being but the safety of children when they are in the custody of a parent who is zoning out with pornography and bringing very risky material into that child's world. Well, one final question. We're in, nearing the end here, but uh, Suppose a man uh, is watching this, he's got a pornography problem, he's married, his wife doesn't know about it. How, how, what would you tell him to do to uh, save his marriage? And you're saying she doesn't know about doesn't it? doesn't know about it. He's, he's worried that it's affecting him. How does, how does he go about saving his marriage? Well, I would want him to know um, that the stats are in his favor if he will go to her and disclose this problem honestly and show, not just say, but show his commitment to change, actually show it through actions, things that he'll do differently with computers or tra business travel, and, and get some help. There are so many phenomenal resources out there that didn't even exist five, seven years ago. So people don't need to feel alone. There's great literature, things online, um, more and more therapists are focusing and specializing in this area. So help is available. And a marriage, does. It, this doesn't need to be a death sentence to a relationship. Um, there are ways to work through the issues that have allowed pornography to take root in the first place and to 
unlearn those and relearn new and healthy strategies for building intimacy that's honest and real. So there's hope for men who are caught up with pornography, but uh, most especially there's hope for marriages where one spouse is uh, perhaps addicted or at least it's a very bad habit. Yes, and, and I don't want to downplay, it, it's a long road, it's a challenging road and a difficult road, but it's doable, it is doable. And I also want to say, it's not just men that are struggling, struggling with this. We know uh, from some research that approximately 30% of pornography consumers are female. So, you know, there there is a growing number of men in marriages who are faced with this form of infidelity, cyber infidelity. Um, and so I just encourage people generally, if this is in your life, um, to seek help, because I do not believe that our sexuality was ever intended to do harm. And so we need to find ways to live responsibly, that it doesn't harm anyone, and it builds and enhances our, our life. Uh, before we leave, I want to talk about uh, a new project that you have, the Clean and Safe Media Pledge. This will help kids. Tell us about it. The Clean and Safe Media Pledge is just a wonderful resource that anyone can use. It's free of charge. Anybody can download and print it off. And what it does is it outlines several internet safety points that if families will review together and then sign and date it as a com showing their commitment, I, it really will act as a powerful buffer against inappropriate media. It's not a guarantee. It's not foolproof. But we know that when families have open honest discussions about such difficult topics that it it, it brings everyone together and, and they know children know where parents stand and parents can express expectations and, and hopes and concerns to their children and it's a wonderful teaching moment and I, I'm happy that the Clean and Safe Media Pledge can facilitate some of those positive and buffering discussions. So I encourage families to download it, print it and, and use it in their home. All right, uh, Dr. Manning, we'll put that on the website, pornharms.com, the Clean and Safe Media Pledge, and people can find that under your name, Jill Manning. Terrific. Our guest today was Dr. Jill Manning. She is a licensed marriage therapist uh, from Colorado. Her papers are on pornharms.com, the effect on women and the effect on marriage and family. Dr. Jill Manning, thank you very much for being with us. You're welcome.